Hi everyone, this is Misty. You are watching the IoT Show. In this new episode, we'll talk about ROS on Windows. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone, this is the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. Today, as you can see, we're going to talk robots. So we have Misty and we have Lou on the show. Thanks, Lou, for coming on the show. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Awesome. So can you introduce yourself to our audience? Tell us a bit about where you are and what you do at Microsoft. Well, my name is Lou Amadio. I'm an architect in the IoT group, uh, focusing on Windows IoT, Windows IoT Core, and Windows IoT Enterprise. Um, currently working on robots. Yeah. So the title of this show is about Microsoft uh, you know, and ROS and how ROS works on Windows. Mm -hmm. uh, ROS doesn't stand for the guy in France that uh, dates Rachel. Uh, actually, ROS is about robot operating system. ROS is a system for operating robots that sits between the operating system like Linux and now Windows and your robot application. It's a programming model, it's a runtime, it build system, packaging system, kind of like you would think .NET Core for building applications. Okay. It, uh, as a programming model, it's designed around the concept of nodes, so that you have various lo uh, blocks of logic that okay. uh, you can assemble to build your application. And the community around ROS has contributed thousands and thousands of nodes that have various different pieces that you don't have to think about, like mapping or navigation. And you can assemble it and in various ways to build just your application. Okay. And so uh, you're going to show us actually how you assemble these modules. Right. Uh, is there a level of independence from the OS itself? Because when we think robots or uh, you know embedded development in general, we think drivers, we think like low-level electronics you need to control, get data from sensors and things like that. Is ROS actually here to abstract all of that? And does it make it easier to switch from one platform to another one? It does, actually. The, each one of these nodes can do one specific piece of behavior. A driver for a, a LiDAR, for example, is publishing uh, a scan data. Mm -hmm. And that scan data doesn't necessarily care about where it came from. So you can have a hobby grade LiDAR for development mm -hmm. and an industrial grade LiDAR for production. And as long as you write your code for LiDAR data, it doesn't matter where it comes from. Mm -hmm. Most of those. Um, Drivers actually come through standardized APIs, so libUSB, WinUSB mm -hmm. lines the same way. And we've done a lot of the porting to make it easy to incorporate those nodes into your application. Okay. So we are doing work with with ROS, which is uh, ROS at the end of the day, is it, is it a, com it's a, a product or is it a, it's a community? It's an open source project? It's all together? Yeah, it's a middleware. Um, so the build system and the runtime, it's the community who okay. built the nodes and maintained the nodes. Uh, and it's a uh, solution for building products. And it's being widely adopted by not just researchers and hobbyists, but in industry as well. OK, I, I don't know if we can name actual customers. They're a big customer in the industry of manufacturing, for example. Mm -hmm. We're using ROS in production Correct. today, right? Um, in fact, we actually just recently did a video uh, through the Microsoft uh, Decoded okay. that talked about uh, a major uh, user of ROS yes. and contributed to us actually uh, building the platform or porting the platform. Cool. So what is it that we, Microsoft, are doing there? Like you mentioned, you said where we contribute or something like that. Mm -hmm. So what is it that we're doing with the ROS community? on ROS? Well, first we actually ported the core of ROS, ROS 1, to yep. Windows. Mm -hmm. uh, that includes the build system, the packaging system, and the dependency manager. Yep. Um, the next thing is we took a look at the ROS community mm -hmm. uh, and all of the nodes that are available, and we, just, we took a path through mobility and manipulation. Okay. Mobility is mobile platforms, kind of mm -hmm. like Misty. Mm -hmm. Manipulation are robot arms. Okay. We do know that there's a delta between what we've enabled and what the community needs in order to take a dependency on Windows. Okay. Uh, and we're actively engaged with the community to find out what that delta is and help port those nodes. Yeah. So I have a, a maybe a question that uh, might be dumb, but why would someone want to run ROS on Windows if Linux is available? Well, that's actually a very good question. There's actually a quite an, uh, Windows is fairly ubiquitous in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of manufacturers who want to bring robots onto the factory floor looking to ROS. There's, as they bring ROS into, the, into their environment, mm -hmm. they're having a conflict with the management that is built around Windows yeah. uh, and the robots they're trying to unload, uh, onboard. So we've had quite a number of industrial partners and uh, 
commercial partners who have asked us to, to enable ROS on Windows so that they don't have to make that choice. The second part is that we've actually had a lot of educators. Um, and at ROSCon, mm -hmm. I had a number of people walk up to me and shake my hand and say, thank you, thank you for, for enabling Windows. A lot of students go to school with Windows laptops, and mm -hmm. they actually spend quite a bit of time trying to bring up Linux and, and learn Linux while they're trying to learn robotics. So this takes a portion of that out of the way. But the thing is, is that while we've enabled ROS on Windows, the beauty of ROS is that it is distributed. You can actually have multiple machines talking to each other. Mm -hmm. So you can have Windows and Linux working together, not just two machines, but you can also have the Windows subsystem for Linux running nodes and talking across the different boundaries. So it's not a Windows versus Linux issue. It's a it's come as you are, we're meeting where you want to be. Love it. You're going to show us a bit of how that works, right? Sure. So before we talk about ROS, um, ROS is a skill. It takes, mm -hmm. uh, it's got a little bit daunting when you first take a look at it. Okay. So if you're get, just getting started in robotics, it might not be the best thing to start with. Like to go with the, the actual code right. and building your modules or uh, your nodes and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're working with younglings or if you'd really just want to experiment with uh, very uh, specific robotics mm -hmm. algorithms, mm -hmm. uh, one of our partners is Misty Robotics. Okay. Uh, they've built a uh, a fully integrated system that actually has quite advanced sensors. Uh, for example, it understands where it is and in the environment, it can map itself, uh, and it actually has various mo motors and actuators that give you some kind of emotion and, and connection to it. Okay. They've built their product uh, in a way that it has a visual programming language based on Blockly, a JavaScript interface, uh, as well as a WebSockets interface. So okay. I was going to jump so, in and, and show you how yeah. a little bit about let's, how that let's works. Let's do that. So whichever your developer skill set is, you can actually you know still program Misty you know in, in different ways. That's what Correct. I'm saying. Okay. So for for a new user to mm -hmm. robotics yeah. uh, in the education or in the home, yeah, yeah. you can actually run uh, Misty with uh, the Blockly. So we're showing a, a simple program here that moves the head and changes the eyes. If we wanted to actually change up the script, it's easy. We stop the script. We go and we find a something to play. So like, for example, play an audio clip and then select an audio file okay. and then run it again. And you can see that it takes effect right away. Yeah. And now it's actually just going through the, the script. Once it gets to the change of the display, mm -hmm. it'll play a sound. So really kind of fun. Nice. Love it. Now, Misty is a fantastic. It's got a lot of advanced sensors, mm -hmm. a, a lot of capability, and the yep. ability to program against it. Um, but it doesn't currently run ROS. OK. The Misty, Misty Robotics has said that they are looking at ROS2 uh, for future use. So OK. Okay. So why don't we switch over to a different robot, and we'll actually talk about ROS about on robotics. ROS itself on. Okay, that works. So now that we're talking about ROS, uh, we're going to use the TurtleBot 3 by Robotis. Okay. TurtleBot has had a long history in the in the ROS community, mm -hmm. all the way back from Roombas all the way up through uh, the current platform form of choice, which is the TurtleBot 3. Okay. Uh, it comes with LiDAR. It comes with battery, um, fairly advanced motors, mm -hmm. as well as a control board. Okay. What we've done is, as we've ported ROS to Windows, we mm -hmm. started lighting up some ro Windows services that mm -hmm. are projected up through ROS, one of the, which is the WinML. Okay. Are you familiar with WinML? Yeah, I am. Of course. <laughs> WinML is a hardware accelerated machine learning uh, inference engine mm -hmm. that runs on Windows. We have taken the YOLO Onyx model, run mm -hmm. it in WinML, and are using that to make decisions on the robot. Okay. So here, we have a ROS core is serves as the uh, central discovery mechanism for a robot. Yep. It allows all of the individual nodes, which mm -hmm. are processes usually, mm -hmm. they connect to ROS core and says, I'm here, yep. tell me what I need to do. Okay. Connects to parameters and things like that. Mm -hmm. During startup, they also typically connect to something else, uh, either to other nodes or yep. to hardware. Yep. So in for this demo, we actually have quite a number of nodes, but mm -hmm. of them, we have five kind of important ones. Okay. Uh, the LiDAR, which is the thing that spins on top. Okay. A camera, mm -hmm. WinML, that connects to, or actually uses WinML. Okay. The demo, which serves as the really the 
the coordinator for all of the nodes. Okay. And then finally, at the very end, how do we actually make the motors move mm -hmm. uh, through raw serial? So as, during a st startup, each one of these nodes connects to their individual piece of hardware. Okay. And then they start doing something. Okay. Now, ROS is a pub sub with these individual microservices. Mm -hmm. So it publishes to a topic. Mm -hmm. Those topics are usually strongly named, um, but they can also be stitched together as you build your robot application. Okay. The LiDAR publishes scan data. Well, scan data is a standardized message that says, here's an array of distances that I see. Okay. The camera typically publishes camera information, so in this case, a, a raw image. Mm -hmm. And then somebody needs to subscribe to it to do some interesting okay. data with that. WinML just happens to be initialized saying, please subscribe to the camera data mm -hmm. that's coming off the camera. Okay. It runs it through YOLO and mm -hmm. ultimately publishes tr an, an array of markers saying, here's all the things I found. Okay. Our demo then subscribes to both those tracked objects mm -hmm. and the LiDAR scan data and correlates them saying, who within that those found objects, who's mm -hmm. the closest? It then finds the closest and then issues a command velocity, which is a standard way of uh, making robot platforms move. Okay. Uh, it has pose data and some velocity mm -hmm. data. And in this case, raw serial bridges that into the microcontroller. And this, this particular microcontroller is programmed with the Arduino IDE. OK. So basically, uh, you, you programmed all these pieces. Uh, or do we have actually some of these already published that people can reuse? Well, that's the cool thing about ROS is that each one of most of these have been published by someone else and leveraged for this demo. OK. We only wrote the WinML tracker node and the ROS demo node. The WinML tracker node is designed to be reusable in your project. So if you wanted to start leveraging WinML for uh, inferencing, mm -hmm. you can do that with this node. Any specific language that you need to uh, you know, learn or be familiar with if you want to get into the development of these nodes? Well, that's actually uh, really awesome about uh, ROS as well is because they have language bindings for quite a number of languages. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, they have Python, uh, C++, and there are C-sharp connectors out there as well. OK. Uh, and there's, a, uh, there's actually a JavaScript front end. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I want to see that robot moving or do something. Fantastic. Well, we're going to switch over to the robot, and, and I'll walk through what it does. OK. On screen, we have a tool called Arviz. Mm -hmm. Arviz is, allows you to visualize what's happening on the robot. Okay. Each node in the robot graph uh, is publishing messages. Those messages are being captured by something. Mm -hmm. In our viz, it's actually capturing those messages and turning them into visualization. It's kind of your debug tool or visualization tool of your ROS application. Exactly. Okay. It runs natively on Windows, but you can actually point it at a Linux robot too. So if you're running it on a Linux robot on mm -hmm. the floor, you can visualize what's happening using it natively on Windows. Makes sense. Or if you're running Windows on the robot, it Makes works sense. the same way. In the left, lower left-hand corner, we have a image visualizer. Mm -hmm. That image visualizer is subscribed to the output of WinML. Mm -hmm. WinML is actually outputting not just the marker array, but it's also outputting a debug image, and we draw blocks on it based okay. on the output of YOLO. In the right-hand side that fills up most of the mm -hmm. screen, we have a visualization of the robot with where it thinks th forward Th is. Okay. And that's based on a, a fusion of where the wheels are and what the IMU is doing, or okay. the inertial me measuring unit. We can also visualize other things. For example, the LiDAR, as it's spinning around, we can mm -hmm. visualize the output there. Uh, or if you have a depth camera, uh, we can visualize point clouds. So it's a very powerful tool. We've also ported another tool called Gazebo, which mm -hmm. allows for you to simulate. So where Arviz will visualize what the robot is doing, Gazebo will actually synthesize uh, sensor data so mm -hmm. that you can actually run your entire robot in simulation before you actually deploy it to a real device. And you don't break it, right? Correct. If you're uh, actually evolving in a hostile environment. Correct, for yeah. The, for the bot, yeah. The, um, the TurtleBot 3 is a nice analog for expensive industrial robots. In yep. fact, many manufacturers uh, or, or roboticists will be given something like a TurtleBot or, or other hobby robot arm okay. to do all of their algorithm development before they actually deploy it to an industrial robot. Okay. So this is one way that ROS is really powerful is because your hobby-grade LiDAR mm -hmm. uh, has an analogous <laughs> node to an industrial node. So 
uh, someone who's producing mm -hmm. industrial LiDAR yeah. produces the same kind of data. But but the logic in your ROS application stays the same, so. Mostly, yes. Yeah. Cool, so what is it doing right now? So what it's, what it's doing is, as the data is coming from the camera mm -hmm. and run through YOLO, yep. that marker array that's being published where everybody is, mm -hmm. is correlated with the sensor data coming out of the LiDAR, and we find the closest person and move towards the center. So this is good. This is a good demo for uh, uh, f floor shows when mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have the uh, area to run a, a robot. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So where do people uh, go to learn more about ROS and what we're doing in Windows? Like, you have a link somewhere, right? That's correct. Uh, we have a, a landing site at mm -hmm. http colon forward slash forward slash yeah. aka.ms forward slash ROS. Okay. And that's the landing page with, which is currently represents our staging documentation as well as how to get started with ROS. We are in the process of upstreaming all that data, all of the repository and okay. changes that we've made to the main repositories, okay. and we'll transfer the documentation to, to the main uh, repositories as well. Okay. You can also go to ROS.org, which actually is mm -hmm. the landing page for ROS, okay. or ROS2.org, which is the landing page for ROS2. For ROS2. Awesome. Well, guys, you know where to go to learn more about ROS, ROS on Windows. Uh, so aka.ms slash ROS is where you're going to get uh, info about all our contributions or Microsoft's contribution. Thanks, Lou, for coming with Ms. T on the show today. Absolutely. I hope to see you thanks soon for, for more me. robot stories on the IT show. And uh, you guys, thanks for watching. Have a good day. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the show.